I have not. You know how hard it was for me when I was cooking this not to taste it, but I'm like, no. Mmm. Okay. Very good. Very good. Good morning, Myersteaders. This morning we have to get some new knives ready for our chicken harvesting we're going to be doing this weekend. We have our mora knife that we've always used that needs to get sharpened. We picked up a new thin blade boning knife from Dexter. A six inch long blade, thin blade for boning. It's a carbon stainless steel blade. Then we picked up a five and a quarter inch sheep skinning knife. This will be the main knife when we're harvesting our chickens this weekend. There's just a few things we need to do. We want to make sure we have a nice sharp edge on the blades. And on the skinning knife, I like the wood handle, but it doesn't feel nice in the hands. It's just me bring it close up. The edges on it, they're round, but the corners are not round. So I'm just going to take a piece of sandpaper. We're going to start with some 180 grit. Actually, it's, we're going to start with some 100 grit. We're going to knock it down. We're going to knock it down quickly and get off all their machining marks. These knives are already sharp, but they're not super sharp, so we want to sand them down before we put our edge on them. But we do need to be careful of that blade. That's it, now we're gonna switch over to a 220. If we go too much with the 100, we'll have a lot of sanding marks, and we don't want that, it'd be hard to get out. We just wanna take down the machine marks. Also, the handle's not finished, so we're gonna put an oil on it. I'd rather have it come this way than with a varnish on it. This is a Dexter knife, it's made in the USA. I like the little logo they got stamped on there. Don't tread on me. That's a perfect fit for the channel. Now I'm just sanding it until it feels good in the hand. I like that. It's round, it's got some edges, so you can feel them, but they're not sharp. It just feels good in the hand. That back has been slightly sanded a little bit more. Nice. All right, I like that. Let's go get the oil. And we'll get a nice oil finish on here. Now, to oil the handle, I'm using mineral oil and beeswax. I mixed up mineral oils and beeswax to put the last two coats of oil onto our butcher block. We have some left over, so I just heated it up. The beeswax just makes it nice and thick. I'm just putting a few coats on the handle until the wood's not soaking it in anymore. Now I know Thursday's video is a little bit different tone for people. Uh, we're sharing here our real life on our modern homestead and that's what our video is about. This isn't fake, it's not TV, it's not made up. The roosters you hear in the background, they're always crowing. And that being said, harvesting animals is part of life on a homestead. It's part of our life on our homestead anyways. We're we're living the life we want to live. One of the biggest reasons is to provide the best food possible for our family. We're not trying to grow the cheapest food. We're trying to grow the best food. And, and in cases, that includes harvesting your own animals. It can be done peacefully and more humanely right here in your own property. And that's what we're sharing. We want that, we want that story to get out. And it's heartfelt. I'm an animal lover too. We have our pets. 
I really loved our pigs when we had them, but I also know they serve a purpose for us. They serve the purpose to provide me and my family with the best food we can get. We're not going to be able to go and buy bacon, sausage, ham, pork chops like that, lard like that. That's just unheard of. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. We don't take pride in killing our animals. We take pride in raising them the best we can and providing the best food possible for us. And unfortunately, it's time to harvest the chickens the week after. But we don't harvest very many animals and I'm glad for that. This is nothing I would want to do daily. I'm going to let that handle sit. I'm going to give it a quick wipe down. And we'll start sharpening some of the other knives. I'm using Edge Pro Apex sharpener. I am terrible at getting the same angle on both sides of my knife blades. So to help me with that a while ago, I bought an Edge Pro. I modified it, I made a nice little base for it to sit on. It comes with legs. That angle to me, while I was putting an edge on my knife, wasn't comfortable. So I made it on this plate. It's a piece of Corian, I believe we I found lying around. And it's a better angle for me personally. Come to a water bottle, because this is for wet sharpening. And it comes with different stones. The coarsest stone it comes with is 120. These knives already have an edge on them. I'm just going to clean up the profile a little bit. So I'm going to start with a 220. And one thing I'm going to do, I'll bring you over to this side and show you. You want to do this wet. So I like to keep the Edge Pro hanging over the table edge for me. Just want to go ahead and moisten the stone. And it will absorb it. You just kind of want to make sure the whole stone is evenly moistened. Like so. You gotta figure out, you need to figure out what angle you wanna set. And there's all different ways you can do it. You can figure out what kind of angle you wanna put on your blade. The easiest thing for me to do is I take my Sharpie and I run it on the edge that's already there. This is the factory set edge that I'm marking. You can see the, does, the edge doesn't come all the way back here. So if I just mark it with a Sharpie, the edge is missing right there too. This side had the nicest edge most even. So I'm going to set the back of the Edge Pro to an angle and I'm just going to start lightly gliding it across the blade. And it's not taking off all of my red sharpie. So what I need to do is I need to lower it down and get that edge lined up with the Edge profile that's on there. Still need to go steeper. Try that one. Oh, even more. Take our knife, set it up against the rest. Now we have our angle figured out. We're just gonna go the whole length of the knife until we got the same profile across the whole blade. We want to try using the whole stone. Now that we have both sides of the profile and sharpened like we want, we're going to switch it up. Fine. We're going to go to the 400 grit stone. Now people that are really good with sharpening don't need to do this, but even still, I like to just put the Sharpie line on it. And this is just a great way to see what your edge is doing. See how it comes off nice and almost evenly in one pass, that means you got a nice, good profile going on. 
show that to you. Can you see that? Let me focus it for you. See the red's all gone on the edge except for right there. So we need to work back here a little bit more and up front here. The back, we guess we can't worry about. We'll get the tip good. In the back, you kind of start hitting the handle. Get it a little bit better. But that is nice. I'm happy. Flip it over. And we'll do the same thing on the back side. Hope you don't listen to a little bit of rain on the tin roof of the outdoor kitchen because it's raining out. Now we're going to jump it up to 600 grit and the higher you go up in the grit, the quicker, the less time you'll be spending on each one. And again, you can just put a mark on it. Don't have to do this if you don't want to, but it's kind of neat to see the progression of getting a nice edge on there as you go up in the stone. The marker came off very quickly this time. You can do short strokes like this, or if you want, you can do a long stroke and try covering the whole blade. All your preference. That's it for the 600. Switch it over to a thousand. And I just like doing the sharpie just to see the process. Bam, the red is off. I'm going to finish sharpening the knives, I need to sharpen for Saturday, the video is going to stop here for this part, and then we're going to go to cooking some sweet Italian sausage. Now comes the fun, delicious part. We get to start cooking with some of this food. Now this right here is why we raise our animals, so we can provide the best food possible our family. We're going to parboil three of our sweet Italian sausages. And we're going to make a nice stir fry with them tonight for dinner. We're going to get these boiling. While they're getting ready to boil, let's go cut up the peppers and onions. A perfect time to try out the knives we just sharpened. Let's try both of the new knives we sharpened today. Make sure we cut on a wood cutting board so we don't dull them out. I 
nice sharp knife. A nice sharp knife is just so nice to use. The boning knife works great. And I know just the right thing to use for oil. I'm not going to use no vegetable oil. We're going to use some nice, beautiful lard that we rendered from our pigs. Let that melt. Finish cutting up our peppers, and then we'll put the peppers in there. This knife is a lot more rigid, but it's still cutting beautifully. I know this isn't its intended use, but might as well try it out. Now this is farm to table cooking. Cooking food with a story. Everything just has so much meaning and memories and appreciation in this food. I mean, even the oil we're using is from the farm. I know Thursday's video wasn't an easy video. That whole process wasn't easy for us. And if you want good food, if you want to eat food, you're taking a life. And we just live intentionally and we know where our food comes from. And we want good, healthy, nourishing food. And we know what it takes. wish you could smell them. You can smell the white wine you put in that sausage. The fennel. Oh, my mouth is drooling already. This is going to be one good dinner. Thanks everybody that was at the class. Thanks Jennifer for cleaning the casings. We'll appreciate all your hard work tonight. Oh, they smell delicious. They just smell so good. Mmm, look at that. Add them into the skillet. Let them fry up for a few minutes. We don't want to, they don't got to, I mean they're already cooked. They're parboiled and cooked. We're just going to fry them up, crisp them up a little bit. We don't want to overcook them. Just let them marinate in with those onions and peppers. And it's gonna be delicious. Ready for some sausage, Louise? Yeah. Heavy plate. Do you want your sausage on your rice or on the side um, of your rice? Side, please. Do you want more rice? No. Heavy plate, Mom. Can, I have, can you try to not to get any oh, peppers cat. or onions? Me. This is what it's all about right here. Mm, mm, mm. That's all you need. Yep. Looks like more on the pan. Yeah. Maybe you want all the onion and pepper. No, I don't. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you just attacked me. Whoa. Oh, I that you try it. I have not. You know how hard it was to me when I was cooking this not to taste it? I'm like, no. I'll try it at the same time. But you might already try it. No. Yeah, but not cooked. It's good. Good. Good drink. Mmm. Very good. Very good. Not fatty. No. Not really. It's good meat. Our patient isn't tough. No, it's the first time I've had natural casein. Thanks, Jennifer. That natural casein is nice. It's not tough and stringy. What's natural casein? Because I don't like casein, so I don't like, I feel like it's chewy. Mm -hmm. What's natural casein? It's part of the pig. It's the intestine of the pig cleaned out. Your video about that? 
I didn't get any footage of that, I don't think. I'll be interested to see you guys see that, because I wasn't here. I don't think I got any footage on that, unfortunately. So what you think of the sausage? Good. good. It's good. Good. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Like infinity thumbs up. Infinity <laughs> thumbs up. Well, that's why we raised the pigs and we did the pig harvesting class was for the great food we had for dinner tonight. Right. And I like the casing too. I liked it that it was not yeah. tough and chewy. Yeah, the natural. It was almost was, like there wasn't anything. It was tough. awesome. Yeah, it was wasn't thick. It wasn't tough. Mm -hmm. it, you couldn't even tell it was there. So that worked out beautifully. Yep. Well, I'm looking forward to cooking more dinners with this food. Yeah. It's gonna be good. Wait. Can't wait for our bacon to be done, Karen. Yes. Yes. Mmm. Mm. That'll be good. You guys will have to be looking forward to those videos. So. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Share it. It's really helping the channel grow. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at... Love the Acres, a guide to modern home setting, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye. Bye. Bye.